Good evening. You're watching the news from Bahrain Television. I'm Mary Claire. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sikhir Palace, Chairman of the U.S. Joint Chief of Staff General Joseph Dunford today, and his accompanying delegation. His Majesty welcomed the Chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff, lauding the strong cooperation between the two countries and the bilateral progress achieved in various fields, especially in the military field. His Majesty the King affirmed Bahrain's keenness to enhance bilateral cooperation to achieve benefits and common interests for both countries, pointing out that the relationship between the two countries is built under mutual respect and joint cooperation. He also affirmed Bahrain's keenness to support regional and international efforts to maintain security, stability and peace lauding the U.S. role in protecting the security and stability of the region and serving international peace issues. General Dunford praised the bilateral relations between the U.S. and Bahrain. He discussed with His Majesty the King the latest developments both regionally and internationally, in addition to topics of common interest. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sikhir Palace today the participants and sponsors of the This is Bahrain event organized by the Bahrain Federation of Expatriate Associations, BFEA, in several European countries and the United States of America, with participation of various government bodies and civil organizations, which has raised awareness of the kingdom's history, achievements and its civil and humanitarian status. His Majesty the King greeted the audience and thanked them for their efforts and noble sentiments towards Bahrain.
Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we are all very privileged to be here today at Secure Palace in the presence of His Majesty, the King of Bahrain, to celebrate the upcoming This Is Bahrain event to be held in the Kingdom, organized by the Bahrain Federation of Expatriate Associations. His Majesty the King the then delivered honor. the following Hear speech. From His Majesty, Your Majesty. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yus'idna an nurahhab bikum fi hadha al-yawm al-mubarak wa bi dhiyufna al-kiram al-musharikina fi munasibat. Hadhihi hiya al-Bahrain. Al-lati tatazaman زيارتهم مع احتفالاتنا بالعيد الوطني وعيد الجلوس حيث نحتفي بالقيم التي جعلت من البحرين واحة للسلام والحرية والتعايش في الوقت الذي تشتد فيه حاجة العالم بأسره لتلك المثل التي نعتز بها فمنذ القدم والبحرين وشعبها يجسدون مبادئ الصداقة والتسامح والاحترام المتبادل والانفتاح على العالم وكلنا فخر بتنوعنا وتعددنا وإيماننا الراسخ بأن لكل فرد الحق في التمتع بحياة آمنة وكريمة واليوم لا تزال تلك القيم نبراسا ومصدر إلهام في كل ما نقوم به كما كانت بالأمس القريب أساسا لميثاق العمل الوطني والدستور وستستمر لتكون إطارا للإنجازات الوطنية في المستقبل وبما أنكم تعيشون بأنفسكم هذه القيم البحرينية الأصيلة كل يوم فأنكم تشهدون ذلك الدفء في الترحاب وحسن الضيافة والصداقة التي يحيطكم بها البحرينيون بمختلف فئاتهم وما يسهمه ذلك في توفير كل ما يلزم لممارسة أديانكم بحرية وارتياح وتطوير مجتمعاتكم المحلية والاحتفال بتراثكم والأهم من ذلك كله مشاركتكم لنا في رغبتنا وتصميمنا على بناء مجتمع عادل ومزدهر ومتسامح للأجيال القادمة فما من شك لأن عملكم الدؤوب ونقلكم لمفهوم هذه البحرين إلى كافة مدن العالم يؤكد حبكم للبحرين وشعبها ويساهم في كسبها اعترافا دوليا بإنجازاتها الإيجابية في جميع سياقاتها الاجتماعية والثقافية والاقتصادية أن هذه الجهود القيمة تحسب لكم جميعا وترجع على وجه الخصوص إلى الجهد والتشجيع الذي قامت به السيدة باتسي ماثيسون رئيس الاتحاد البحريني لجمعيات الجاليات الأجنبية وبمساندة من جميع أعضاء الجمعيات المنضوية للاتحاد والذين أولوا هذا المفهوم عناية فائقة منذ انطلاق فكرته مؤكدين لكم في الختام أن جميعنا في مملكة البحرين ننظر بعين من التقدير والامتنان إلى الاتحاد البحريني لجمعيات الجاليات الأجنبية لما يقوم به من جهد مشكور في إبراز وجه بلدنا الحقيقي للعالم كله 
متمنين لاحتفالتكم القادمة بالاتحاد وجمعياته كل توفيق ونجاح والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Good afternoon, Your Majesty, Your Royal Highnesses, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. It is our honor and privilege for This is Bahrain delegates and sponsors to be received here today by Your Majesty. Your Majesty, we are recently returned from our latest This is Bahrain events in Washington, D.C. and New York City. And with Your Majesty's permission, I would like to thank all of our delegates for their hard work and dedication, and also thank our sponsors for their loyal and generous support for This is Bahrain events. A particularly warm vote of thanks to the American Embassy Consulate in Bahrain for their kind assistance in facilitating the smooth and efficient processes of our delegates' travel documents. And also a word of thanks to all of the previous ambassadors of our host countries for their hard work and support for This is Bahrain. Your Majesty, we arrived in Washington, D.C. at a particularly special time for the United States of America. It was a time that saw Christians, Jews, and Muslims joined together to celebrate Yom Kippur, Eid al-Adha, and the visit of His Holiness the Pope. And as we listened to His Holiness the Pope's speech in Washington, we realized that His Holiness shares Your Majesty's vision and beliefs. This joining together of religious faiths in mutual respect and harmony reminded us of Bahrain because this is our normal way of life in the kingdom and has been so for centuries. Your Majesty, as this is Bahrain has traveled the world, we have seen that the rest of the world is finally waking up to what has been the cornerstone of Your Majesty's unshakable visionary leadership since Your Majesty's accession. Namely, that religious freedom is the most powerful tool in providing a strong foundation for a multi-faith, multicultural society that lives harmoniously in the spirit of peaceful coexistence, mutual respect, and love. And that is what bonds us together, Bahrainis and expatriates, which in turn fosters a fully inclusive society where no one is homeless, where the vulnerable are provided for, and where discrimination does not exist. Your Majesty, this is Bahrain. In short, Your Majesty, it is clear that many other world leaders now see the wisdom of Your Majesty's vision and are now actively implementing these same goals and objectives in their countries. From British Prime Minister David Cameron to President Barack Obama to President Francois Hollande of France, they are all now focusing on the vital importance of interfaith dialogue, religious freedom, and eradicating the ignorance that breeds fear and that can all too easily lead to the gateway of evil that can take our vulnerable young people down the destructive path of extremism, radicalization, and terror. During our events, when we showcase the achievements of Bahrain and our religious freedom, we have found certain media and activists commenting on human rights in Bahrain based on what they have heard from others. Why then, when it comes to human rights, is Bahrain always in the firing line? What about other countries within this region? What about other countries to the far east of the Kingdom of Bahrain? My question, Your Majesty, is why are they continually hitting at Bahrain and ignoring the blatant human rights abuses and shortcomings of other countries? The reason is simple. It's because of the reforms that Your Majesty initiated and delivered to your people since the very first day of Your Majesty's accession. With reference to certain members of the European Parliament, officials in Geneva and at the United Nations, my request to them is that instead of repeatedly being so negative about Bahrain, why don't they shift their focus and knock on the doors of others and ask about their human rights? Why is it always Bahrain? Your Majesty, we have created a comparison using irrefutable facts and figures between Bahrain and other countries, and we share this with our guests when This is Bahrain travels. Following on from this, Your Majesty, we have invited them to Bahrain to see for themselves with their own eyes, make their own comparisons, and draw their own conclusions about the Kingdom of Bahrain. 
Despite the fact that Bahrain continues to rank higher than some so-called highly developed first world countries in the world ranking tables, in areas such as women's equality, religious freedom, quality of lifestyle, safety and security, economic stability, health care, housing, education, labor rights, maternity leave and the rights of the child, there are still those who continue to lie and refuse to acknowledge the truth. That is why This Is Bahrain events are so very successful, because all we do is simply tell the truth and back it up with verifiable facts and figures. Your Majesty, I would like to bring my speech to a close with one thing we can all be assured of. Your Majesty, there is no fear about the Kingdom of Bahrain and its future under Your Majesty's leadership. With the support of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa. Because when we Bahrainis and expatriates travel abroad to showcase the achievements of Your Majesty's ministries, we see and we feel the differences in our lifestyles, in our rights and our personal freedoms, and our most precious religious freedom, all of which are unique to Bahrain in this region and beyond. So Your Majesty, we have no fear for our future because we know Bahrain is in good hands, alhamdulillah. Your Majesty, we have been approached by societies in both the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates who want to join us on this unique experience of This is Bahrain. We are also delighted that several countries have been in touch with us to express their desire to host This is Bahrain in their countries. And we are proud to inform Your Majesty that one of these invitations comes from the President of Tunisia. As you're aware, Your Majesty, Tunisia's National Dialogue Quartet has recently been awarded the Nobel Peace Prize, and we would like to take this opportunity to congratulate our Tunisian brothers and sisters. Finally, Your Majesty, if I were to summarize what we have been doing during our This is Bahrain events, I would be inspired to say, venemus communus dedicimus. We came, we shared, we learned. This is the true essence of This is Bahrain. And Your Majesty, I use Latin with good reason, as it gives me great pleasure to announce that our next exciting international destination will be in the beautiful historic city of Roma in Italy. Your Majesty, we are now focused on Friday, December the 11th, and this is Bahrain, in Bahrain, under Your Majesty's royal patronage and in celebration of our glorious national day. We are sure this will be an unparalleled and unbridled showing of love and devotion from Bahrainis and expatriates together for your majesty, for the leadership, and for our home, the blessed kingdom of Bahrain. Your majesty, I sincerely ask your forgiveness for taking so much time to express my feelings, feelings that I know many others share. But I felt compelled to give these points the importance they so surely deserve. Thank you, Your Majesty. French Ambassador Bernard Reginald Fabre then delivered a speech in which he commended the This is Bahrain events, which include representatives of a wide spectrum of Bahraini society and journalists who represent Bahrain's open and tolerant multi-religious society. He said Bahrain and France share a common view on the matter of terrorism and are working together as part of the same coalition to fight against ISIL and prevent it from dictating its barbaric laws. The ambassador commended the efforts of His Majesty the King towards France, expressing pride in the quality of the multifaceted relations between Bahrain and France. He highlighted educational cooperation between the two countries, stressing French universities are ready to best assist Bahrain, and highlighted that the Minister of Education, Dr. Majid Al Naimi, presented his project to create a new university last August during his most recent trip to France. The French ambassador highlighted that under the reign of His Majesty King Hamad, Bahrain has become the first country in the Gulf Cooperation Council to have generalized the teaching of French in both public and private school systems. Le témoignage de l'existence et du développement à Bahrain d'une société plurireligieuse, 
respectueuse des appartenances spirituelles de chacun, ouverte et tolérante. Un tel message a été particulièrement bien reçu par les nombreux responsables français qui ont reçu cette délégation. Ce message était particulièrement important à écouter car votre pays majesté apporte la preuve que bâtir une société respectueuse de l'autre est possible dans le monde arabe au moment où le Moyen-Orient donne, hélas, de nombreux exemples du contraire quand les tenants d'une vision radicalisée de l'islam veulent imposer par les armes leur terrible modèle de société. La création à votre initiative de « This is Bahrain », dont les délégations sont conduites avec talent par Mme Betsy Mathieson, secrétaire générale de la Fédération des associations d'expatriés à Bahreïn, est intervenue à un moment crucial, afin de ne pas laisser aux radicaux le monopole de la communication. Le 13 novembre dernier, des terroristes entraînés et envoyés par Daresh ont tué 130 personnes à Paris et blessé 200 autres. Le monde entier, horrifié, a témoigné sa solidarité avec la France. Bahreïn au premier titre. Ce soutien est essentiel, car c'est ensemble que nous devons réagir. La France saura défendre ses valeurs, son modèle de société, son système politique, en dépit de telles attaques. Bahreïn et la France sont sur ce point totalement sur la même ligne et œuvrent ensemble au sein d'une même coalition pour lutter contre l'État islamique et ne pas lui laisser dicter sa loi barbare. Cet objectif ne variera pas et nous employons tous nos efforts pour l'atteindre. Je n'ai pas oublié le geste que Votre Majesté avait eu pour mon pays lors des attentats meurtriers de Charlie Hebdo et un super, contre un supermarché juif le 7 janvier 2015, se faisant représenter par Son Altesse, cher Abdallah Ben Hamad El Khalifa, ainsi que par le ministre des Affaires étrangères, cher Khaled Ben Ahmed Ben Mohamed El Khalifa, lors de la marche républicaine réunissant à Paris leaders et personnalités du monde entier. Au même moment, parallèlement, la France œuvre pour mettre en œuvre un mouvement de l'islam en France et faire la démonstration de la compatibilité de l'islam avec la démocratie, comme l'a souligné le Premier ministre français, M. Manuel Valls. L'imam Chalgoumi, ici présent, est également l'un des participants de cette réflexion. Majesté, je veux saisir l'occasion qui m'est donnée en m'adressant à vous pour vous dire combien je suis fier de la qualité des relations multiformes entre Bahreïn et la France. Depuis à peine plus d'un an que j'ai pris mes fonctions à Manama, vous avez rencontré à deux reprises le président François Hollande à l'Élysée. La dernière fois, c'était le 8 septembre, et au vu du nombre de ministres qui vous accompagnaient, j'ai eu l'impression que la moitié du gouvernement de Bahreïn avait séjourné à Paris pendant une semaine. Lors de votre visite à Paris, Quatre accords, dont l'un porte sur votre demande d'expertise en matière de planification urbaine, ont été signés. Le 20 novembre, la deuxième session du Haut Comité bilatéral s'est aussi tenue à Paris, qui a permis de préciser les axes de coopération pour les deux années à venir. Nos échanges et notre coopération couvrent de très nombreux domaines, dont celui de l'éducation. Les universités françaises sont prêtes à aider de leur mieux Bahreïn dans votre projet de création de nouvelles universités que le ministre de l'Éducation a déjà exploré en août dernier. La Chambre de commerce française à Bahreïn, créée cette année, va également donner un élan supplémentaire à nos échanges. En ce moment, Paris accueille la conférence sur le climat, la COP21. Sur ce dossier essentiel pour l'humanité et surtout les générations à venir, nous avons initié avec le Royaume de Bahreïn une réflexion commune ainsi qu'une sensibilisation de la société civile et des médias. Je sais que la biodiversité et la transition vers des énergies durables est un processus de long terme sur lequel la France souhaite approfondir avec vous la coopération bilatérale. Majesté, puisque vous m'avez fait l'honneur de m'inviter à m'exprimer en français, permettez-moi de vous remercier pour votre action en faveur de l'enseignement de la langue française à Bahreïn. Sous votre règne, Bahreïn est devenu le premier pays du Conseil de coopération du Golfe à avoir généralisé l'enseignement du français dans le système scolaire public comme privé. Vous avez désormais plus de 130 enseignants de français et je suis en contact avec les autorités compétentes à Manama pour renforcer la formation des professeurs et si possible rétablir une filière diplômante. Renforcer le trilinguisme est aussi la mission de l'école française, dont le proviseur est ici aujourd'hui, qui accueille 600 élèves dans une centaine de jeunes bahréniens. 
Majesté. Merci pour votre extrême courtoisie et pour avoir donné à l'équipe de l'ambassade de France, à des membres éminents de la communauté française et à moi-même, l'opportunité de célébrer ensemble l'amitié franco-omanaise. Shokran Jazilam. After that, the mother of the martyr, Ms. Kawthar Al-Ajbar, delivered a speech in which she expressed honor in meeting with His Majesty the King, held the role of This is Bahrain in spreading the values of religious tolerance and its role in combating terrorism. She also lauded His Majesty the King's remarkable efforts in spreading the values of unity and tolerance on an international level and highlighted Bahrain's status as a role model for diversity of religion and cultures with numerous holistic places of different religions. She then expressed her keenness to participate in the upcoming This is Bahrain event to deliver the humanitarian message of His Majesty the King to the world. لأؤكد لهم تضامني واستعدادي للمشاركة معهم في نقل رسالة التسامح والتعايش بين الطوائف والأديان ومواجهة التطرف المقيت الذي كان سببا في مقتل ابن محمد تضامني لمواجهة السبب ذاته الذي كاد أن يقوم بتخريب البحرين الجميلة البحرين التي كانت ولا تزال ببحرها وبرها بداخلي منذ أن كنت طفلة مواجهة تلك الطائفية التي لا تؤمن إلا باللون الواحد لا تؤمن سوى بالعنف وسلب حياة الآخرين دون أدنى سبب لطالما كانت التساؤلات التي تجول في خاطري هل هم الأعداء الذين يسيرون بجانبنا وعلينا في كل مرة أن نحذرهم أكثر من كل مرة لماذا يريدون منا أن نصبح أكثر شتاتا وضياعا أن نكون ملطخين بدماء الأبرياء أن نكون أشرارا لا نعرف سوى لغة البنادق والرصاص وإلغاء الآخر ألا نسكن سوى في خرابهم الذي يؤمنون به لماذا هنا في البحرين ففي هذه المملكة التي أسرتني بطيبها وتسامحها مات الكثير من النساء من الرجال والأطفال بسبب هؤلاء بالمستقبل الذي انتظروه كي يصبحوا كبارا ويخدموا أوطانهم وأمهاتهم كما كنت أتمنى أن يحدث لابن محمد الذي استشهد بسبب حزام ناسف من شخص داعشي فأنا لست الوحيدة التي دفعت الثمن وضحت بفلذة كبدها بل هناك الكثير هنا وهناك قدم التضحيات مات محمد لكنني لم أتلقى عزاه فقد عزيت أم قاتلة وعظمت لها الأجر لأنه اختار ابنا من خيرة الشباب ليغتال نقاؤه وبراءته وطموحه أعزيك سيدتي وأنا على معرفة تامة أن قلبك كقلبي كقلب أي أم يتقطع ألما وحزنا على فراقي على فراقي فلذات أكبادها جلالة الملك لقد كنتم منذ, الق... منذ القدم تسيرون نحو تحقيق ذلك تنشرون روح التسامح والمحبة والتعايش والانتماء في أرجاء العالم وتؤكدون أنه رغم الاختلاف إلا أن روح التجاذب الإنسانية والحرية الممنوحة هم السلاح الحقيقي لدرء أي شر أو خراب أو تطرف والنهوض بالعزة والكرامة والإنجازات سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة إن الموحد الملك عبد العزيز رحمه الله بدأ خطوة الألف ميل باتجاه خلق فكرة الوطن للفقراء للفرقاء والمختلفين إنسان الجزيرة صحرائيه وساحليه شيعيه وسنيه صوفيه واسماعيليه وغيرهم كل هذا الاختلاف الجميل حصنه بحصن الوطن الحصين وكذلك هي التجربة البحرينية الفريدة في استراتيجيتها الجامعة التي استوعبت ضرورة الاختلاف في صنع الحضارات وإثراء الأوطان وجاءت قافلة هذه البحرين التي ترعاها جلالتكم حفظكم الله مثالا حيا لما تحتاجه المنطقة حقا في من نموذج حي للمحبة والتسامح اللا متناهي إلى مختلف الأديان والثقافات حيث تعد مملكة البحرين 
أكبر مثال ليست في منطقة الخليج وحسب بل في المنطقة العربية الكبرى تشمل تنوع الأديان والثقافات والحضارات المختلفة وتضم المقدسات والبيوت الدينية والعقائدية المتنوعة من مآتم مساجد معابد معابد للبوذا والهندوس والسيخ والكنائس الكاثوليكية والأرثوذكسية والقبطية أيضا كل هذه الشواهد أثرت وعززت من التنوع المذهبي والفكري والديني والحزبي المجتمعة في, البح في المملكة البحرين والتي اتضحت معالمها بكل وضوح خلال العهد الإصلاحي لجلالتكم وكان تنوع المقاعد وكان تنوع مقاعد المجالس النيابية والبلدية منذ عام 2002 وحتى يومنا هذا خير رهان لهذه المبادرة الواعية والحكيمة حيث باتت التجربة البحرينية تجربة تقض مضاجع الطائفيين وأصحاب ثقافة اللون الواحد وجعلت المخربين والداعشيين وغيرهم من الطائفيين يشتعلون حقدا ويصرون على أفكارهم الدموية لأن عواطفهم الهشة واللا إنسانية لا تؤمن إلا بالخراب والشتات في بلد جميل كالبحرين يمد يده للجميع ختاما يا جلالة الملك المفدى أود أن أقول اليوم نحن نعرف خصمنا جيدا ونعرف أنه لا يريد أي شيء سوى نشر الخراب تحت اسم الحقوق والمظلومية المزيفة والفوضى وأن الوطن الحصين هو الدرع المكين تجاه هؤلاء الطامعين الذين يريدون أن نكون مكشوفين للعراء والشتات وأطماع الدول الأخرى التي تسعى دوما لتوسعاتها العرقية تحت اسم الإسلام وبنهاية القول أعلنها من هنا من قصركم العامر باسمي وباسم إخواني وأخواتي من أبناء المملكة العربية السعودية نؤكد مشاركتنا ودعمنا لفعالية هذه البحرين القادمة لنشر الرسالة الإنسانية لجلالتكم ونقلها للعالم بأسرة هذه الرسالة التي تحمل في طياتها بث روح التسامح والتعايش والسلام للجميع وفقنا الله وإياكم لما فيه الخير والصلاح وحفظ الله البحرين من كل شر ومكروه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I'd like to thank you all for being here today at Sikir Palace for this joyous occasion. And thank you again, Your Majesty, for hosting us this afternoon and also for hosting our guests this evening for dinner. On that note, we hope everyone can be with us on Friday the 11th of December for This is Bahrain in Bahrain at the National Stadium. Thank you very much. Good afternoon.
His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Sakhir Palace members of the Board of Trustees of Bahrain Political Development Institute, BPDI, led by Royal Court's Under Secretary for Communication and Information and Chairman of the BPDI, Alian Rumehi, on the occasion of issuing the Royal Order appointing them members of the Board of Trustees. His Majesty the King highlighted the important role played by the BPDI. PDI in enhancing democratic principles, loyalty, national belonging, humanitarian rights, freedom and the principles of separation of powers. He also stressed the importance of nurturing political development to improve political awareness. His Majesty congratulated members of the Board of Trustees, lauding both their capabilities and their efforts, which have contributed to the improvement of the Institute through programs, events and activities held in Bahrain. He stressed the importance of confirming the concept of political development through holding seminars and forums to enhance the democratic march of Bahrain and achieve the, inspiration, the aspirations rather, of Bahrain and its people. His Majesty the King reinforced the importance of focusing on tolerance, fraternity and eliminating violence between Bahrainis, affirming Bahrain would always remain as one family. He expressed pride in Bahraini people and their contributions in Bahrain's progress and achievements, wishing them all further success. For his part, Alian Rumehi expressed appreciation to His Majesty the King for the position they have been offered. The Institute is widely considered a model of political development in the region and one of the achievements of His Majesty the King's reform project. He praised the King's directives and vision to improve the performance of the Institute to achieve prosperity of Bahrain and provide a high living standards for citizens. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, met at Qudaybiyah Palace today. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The meeting reviewed the development efforts to improve the fields of infrastructure and services, in addition to the government's continuous efforts to achieve sustainable development and face all challenges, which includes securing the country and maintaining the stability to ensure development aspired by the government under the leadership of His Majesty the King. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince also reviewed the government's plans for funding the expenses of the state general budget, in addition to plans to reduce public debt through increasing oil and non-profit public revenue and non-oil public revenue, as well as the initiatives and measures needed to overcome financial challenges. Finally, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince briefed His Royal Highness the Prime Minister on his participation in Paris's climate change conference. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at Qudaybiyah Palace today the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Al Mullah, Shura Council Speaker Ali Al Saleh, MPs and a number of senior state officials. His Royal Highness confirmed Bahrain's achievements in the field of charity, thanking all charity organizations and societies for their dedication to charity and humanitarian action, which embodies the principles of cohesion and brotherhood. The Prime Minister expressed pride in the deep-rooted relations with the people who have showed their support through care and congratulations on the success of the recent medical checkups, which were shown via media, cables and social media. He expressed appreciation for the people's noble sentiments, which confirmed the true one family spirit of the Kingdom of Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty the King, and added that Bahrain is a pioneer in many fields thanks to the wise leadership of His Majesty the King and the commitment of the government to achieve what is best for the country and the people, despite evil attempts to hinder development. He said those who aim to harm the country's security and stability have failed thanks to the wisdom of the King and the dedication of the government to maintain security and stability, confirming its commitment to overcoming any shortcomings to achieve the best interests of the people. The Prime Minister stressed the importance of reinforcing cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities, highlighting the need to unify efforts to serve the ongoing development process of the country and to meet the demands and aspirations of the people. His Royal Highness confirmed pride in the Kingdom's social openness and cultural diversity, pointing out the need to preserve the authentic Bahraini spirit which is known for its coexistence, cohesion and brotherhood.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, chaired today the cabinet meeting at Gudebia Palace. In the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister commended the participation of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince in the United Nations Summit on Climate Change held recently in Paris and attended more by more than 150 countries. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince praised the Republic of France's organization of the summit. Regarding the celebration of Bahrain Women's Day, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister praised the remarkable accomplishments and contributions of Bahraini women. As part of the celebrations held this year, Bahraini women working in the financial and banking sector were congratulated for the role they have played in development of the financial services sector over the past 50 years. His Royal Highness congratulated the United Arab Emirates on the celebration of the 44th National Day and highlighted the strength of bilateral relations between Bahrain and the UAE, expressing his gratitude to the UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, for his continuous support to the Kingdom on foreign interference in its affairs. His Royal Highness also welcomed Bahrain's recent award as the top-ranking Arab country for information and communications technology development, with the International Telecommunications Union ranking Bahrain first among Arab countries and 27th globally. His Royal Highness also praised the signing of the Charter of Press Ethics, which was initiated by the Minister of Information and Parliament Affairs and builds on the Constitution and National Action Charter and establishes a charter in line with international press standards and human rights conventions. The Cabinet approved a memorandum on the issuance of the executive regulations of the Real Estate Registration Law and a memorandum on the implication of a law that sets the debt limit at 60% of the gross domestic product. The Cabinet approved a memorandum related to encouraging foreign investment in the logistics sector, especially in activities related to delivery and packaging. The Cabinet also reviewed a memorandum on transferring the authority concerned with electronic transactions from the Ministry of Industry and Commerce to the Informatics and E-Government Authority, and took note of a number of draft proposals by the Legislative Authority in order to take the necessary measures. Following the meeting, the Minister of Information and Parliament Affairs held a press conference outlining the issues and decisions discussed during the Cabinet meeting. He affirmed that as an executive authority, the government is constitutionally committed to the legislative authority's decisions. The Minister of Information said that economic development is part of the government's programme, including the logistics, tourism and industrial sectors. He said that the government reviewed a memorandum on the implications of a law that sets the debt limit at 60% of the gross domestic product, but still did not take any final decision. He also confirmed that the Charter of Press Essex, which is an initiative from the chief editor of local newspapers, will result in periodic communication to further discuss any comments regarding the Charter. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Gudebia Palace a delegation of United Nations Human Settlement Programme, UN Habitat, led by the Deputy Executive Director and Assistant Secretary General of UN Habitat, Ezia Kachira. On the occasion of visiting the Kingdom to participate in the Strategic Partnership Meeting of the Programme with Bahrain, his Royal Highness affirmed Bahrain's supportive stance to all efforts aimed at serving humanity and hailed UN Habitat's efforts in supporting nations which aim to achieve sustainable urban development. He called for an increase in efforts to achieve sustainable development goals and to participate in maintaining global security and stability, and noting the Kingdom's keenness to enhance its cooperation with UN Habitat and to encourage regional and international efforts to adopt peace, stability and development initiatives. For her part, Aisha Kachiara said, hailed the remarkable efforts of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister in modernizing and combating poverty, which set the kingdom amongst the leading countries in a number of fields, 
including that of sustainable urban development and a role model for its keenness to achieve sustainable development goals. She expressed appreciation towards His Royal Highness being recognised for four UN awards in recognition of his efforts in combating poverty. She also expressed her appreciation for Bahrain's supportive stance to Palestine, which resulted in setting plans to and projects to develop different cities in Palestine. Aisha Kachira also expressed her thanks and appreciation to Bahrain's government, led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, for his cooperation with the United Nations Human Settlement Programme, hailing His Royal Highness's 2008 award, which encourages countries to participate in the field of housing and urban development. Finally, the delegation presented His Royal Highness with a commemorative gift in appreciation for his remarkable efforts to the United Nations Human settlement program in Palestine, which resulted in raising the awareness of the international community towards increasing efforts for helping Palestine. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa received today at Qudaybiya Palace Alba's Chairman of the Board of Directors, Sheikh Dej bin Salman Al Khalifa, in the attendance of the Chief Executive of Bahrain Economic Development Board, Khalid Al Ramehi, and Alba's Chief Executive Officer, Timothy Murray. His Royal Highness affirmed the importance of enhancing the national economy and creating more job opportunities, highlighting Alba's significant role in driving forward economic growth within the kingdom, and said that Alba now new project, Line 6 Expansion, shows the kingdom's commitment to key development projects that are aimed at improving citizens' living standards. His Royal Highness also hailed Alba's remarkable role in enhancing the kingdom's national economy. He congratulated Alba's Board of Directors for achieving the Lifetime Achievement Award by Middle East Business Leaders Awards, hailing Alba's remarkable efforts that have resulted in achieving an outstanding performance. For his part, Sheikh Dej bin Salman Al Khalifa expressed his thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for his constant support for the company. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa met the President of the International Federation of Equestrian Sports, the FEI, Ingmar de Vos at Gudebia Palace. His Royal Highness praised the award given by the FEI to His Majesty the King in recognition of His Majesty's pioneering role and dedicated efforts to promote equestrian sports, noting that the sport is considered part of the Kingdom's heritage. His Royal Highness highlighted the FEI's continued efforts to promote and support equestrian sports on an international level and its effort to support and organise programmes, activities, tournaments and events. He expressed hope for further cooperation between the FEI and the Bahrain Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation, also known as BRIEF. The Crown Prince noted that the role played by BRIEF in the Kingdom strengthens Bahrain's role within the equestrian field and welcomed its organisation of events and participation in various prestigious competitions. He highlighted the strong capabilities of Bahrain's horse riders and that Bahrain is among the countries that owns the best purebred Arabian horse stables. For his part, the president of the FEI expressed gratitude for the opportunity to meet the Crown Prince and praised the Kingdom's efforts under the leadership of His Majesty the King in further developing and supporting equestrian sports. He noted that these efforts have resulted in a high standard of Bahrain riders and contributed to their achievement in both regional and international tournaments. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, participated in the ministerial preparatory meeting of the 137th session of the, sixth, the 36th term of GCC Supreme Council meetings. During the meeting, the Minister of Foreign Affairs completed studying the decisions and recommendations forwarded by the relevant ministerial committee 
of the GCC leaders associated with enhancing the joint Gulf work in various fields, as well as the latest development and regional and international arenas. The ministers also discussed the final communique forward to the GCC leaders, which will be issued at the conclusion of the GCC summit to be held on the 9th and 10th of December 2015 in Riyadh.